Well, good day, good night, good morn to all of you ACAP listeners. It's me, your host and pal, brother, spiritual guide, Stefan Satani. And I'm here just at, on a Sunday evening recording my voice to you. I'm just trying to excrete these vocal sounds so that you guys can hear them and so that you guys can have a little more zen to your day i want you from a scale of one to zen i want you to be full fledged zen so i'm gonna start maybe i'll hum and sing some of the rest of the intro coming to you is the no i'm not gonna do that that's not zen but hey you know what is the sklar brothers my special guests randy and jason sklar they've been everywhere that they're like mr worldwide maybe even better than pitbull himself dale but they've been on a legion of shows i remember first seeing them on it's always sunny in philadelphia they were on the episode the gang dances their asses off also my wife watches gray's anatomy and they were on an episode of gray's anatomy they also hosted cheap seats on espn as well as a bunch of other stuff and they do stand up out of everything too and they have podcasts and all that and they're coming to tempe arizona this week link is going to be in the show notes so you can catch them please go see them support them follow them we talk about all the cool stuff they do and how they set up these cool environments through their podcasts and through other things to just continuously challenge themselves to keep writing to keep cranking out new material so that's pretty awesome and yeah that's pretty much it oh no that's not it because guess what your boy stefan has a show december 14th trash or treasure at the house of comedy link is going to be in the show notes for those ticky tickies you guys want to pull on through because this is one of the dankest dopest shows it's so lit it's en fuego. It's going to be awesome. The last three were fire. And this one is going to be scorching hot. Anyway, Christmas is approaching us in the holiday season. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you guys are seeing your therapist, getting ready for all the anxiety that all your families are going to cause you. I am not. I'm just going bareback into my family. That's a weird thing to say. But no, my wife's sister husband and child are going to be visiting us for one month and it's going to be so much fun i can't wait i put up the christmas lights today too which was awesome my wife and i did and i don't know i'm not very handy with things so she has low patience with that type of stuff so she ended up just taking the hammer and nails and staple gun away from me and i to make things worse i will just say <laughs> I would just tell her, babe, thank you so much for being patient with me. I really appreciate that. And that's why I have a nail in my hand. All right, guys. Well, I think without further ado, I am going to deliver you this piping hot episode. Careful, don't burn the tongue. This one is just let it cool off a little bit. Take a pause. Low on it. Okay, wait. Okay, now. Hey, Randy, how are you? Oh, Good here. both here. How are you guys? Good, great. How do we sound? Because Randy could maybe grab a microphone. I mean, a little nasally, but other than that. That's our Jewish roots. If I had nothing <laughs> right. Good. When, when was the last time you guys have come to Phoenix? 2018 or 19. Oh, okay. Okay. We did stand up live in 2019. That's right. And it was great. Did you guys go in the summertime or did you guys... Play it so smart, going winter. one time we were in the summer yes and we went and it was uh mind-numbingly hot i couldn't believe it the misters and whatnot kept us alive basically we lived off the the water from the misters at open air restaurants yeah oh yes the misters i remember when i was a kid we had those at home yeah <laughs> you cool. had them at your house i have misters in my house do you that's yeah. wonderful do you have misses as well i feel those no. are important no <laughs> we have mr misters <laughs> they just play all of it. that's our sponsor for this podcast so this is Mr. great Mr. just, I love just it. uh just misting right into it welcome everybody to an episode of a comedy advice podcast my name is stefan sitani i'm your host joining me today very special guest double the trouble everybody please welcome randy and jason sklar clap 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 thank hi, you hi, hi. thank you uh, thank you golf clap oh 
I'm super excited to have you guys on. I, um, I've i also seen, are you guys in Toronto right now or have you guys returned? So no, we just got back from Toronto. We were shooting a show up there. I don't think we're allowed to say what it was, but it was uh, super fun and it should come out next year sometime, either fall. late spring or fall. I think the fall. Uh, just a great experience overall and fun to be up in Toronto. And, you know, something that most people in, in the Phoenix area can understand, freezing. Freezing. Yeah. <laughs> brutal. It, yeah, exactly. We over here, it's uh, I, it's definitely sweater weather. I think it's like 85 degrees. Yeah. Today. I mean, come on. You got to jack that heat up. <laughs> oh, man. We um, and I also I loved the little videos that you guys had posted on Instagram and TikTok. I thought you dropped some subtle hints of maybe what you guys are doing, even though it's a little bit of a secret, maybe a documentary into why goose jackets are so darn expensive <laughs> canada, oh, the canada oh, goose jackets oh yeah they're really expensive. they were making fun of our los angeles accents eh? yeah we got some really bad accents <laughs> look if you're against us we're going to be against you i mean it's <laughs> so fun to play those just you know clueless canadian people like we kept so we did a lot of stand-up while we were up there and yeah. um, we just went to this great place called the Comedy Bar just to continue to work and whatnot. And we just started mm -hmm. doing these characters. We'd come on stage as these two Canadian oh, characters. Yeah, we're from yeah. Los Angeles. Heading up to the cottage, eh? You know, and it was like at first, I think people were like, "What do you?" Shut guys? up! They Shut were like mad, and then we kept <laughs> going. Don't was, be angry at us. Yeah. we're just shining a mirror on you. Yeah, I mean, sorry. That's how you guys talk. I mean, it was really, really fun. Oh my gosh, that sounds incredible. And it's so cool to see that you can go up, you, no fear, just going up, making fun of Canadians right to their faces. I mean, and I think there's a, there's definitely, there's a little danger in doing that. But like the truth of the matter is if you write good jokes, then the people in like, because by the end of the bit, they were on board, so on board. And that also felt really good. We're like, okay. The, we won you over. We, we won, won you over a little bit. We poked the bear. We brought you in. We brought you in. <laughs> That's great. I, and out of all bears to poke, I feel like the Canadian bear is the best one because it might yeah. apologize to you afterwards. Ooh, just sorry. Right. Oh, so, so sorry. sorry. Yeah. So I didn't sorry. know you were about to do that yeah. to us. Uh, that we'll so head off weird. to the woods. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to go pay our last tributes to Rob Ford. Yeah. Mayor <laughs> Ford. Former mayor of Toronto. Who just did a lot of cocaine. He did a lot of crack. Yeah. Did some crack cocaine. Yeah. And then did some, uh, created some policy. Well, he used to snort cocaine right off of a maple leaf. Yeah. That's how I did it. <laughs> yeah. Right off of a leaf. Yeah. The crack cocaine may not have been pure, but the maple leaf was just the, the purest. Leaf. As pure oh, as yeah, it that was a pure maple leaf. That was from Wayne, <laughs> that was from Wayne Gretzky's garden, eh? Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> they pulled that right off. From his garden. He's done two things right. Raised a crazy daughter. Yeah, who's big on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Pauline oh, Brett. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Is that and her name, eh? I think it is, eh? Dustin Johnson, oh. right? Okay, we got to stop. All we right, have to okay, stop. Right. We have to stop. All right, we're done. <laughs> No, no, this is this is fantastic. And I also I'm really excited <laughs> for you guys to come to Tempe, Arizona, yeah. um, the 10th through the 12th of December. And you guys are going to be doing stand up there. I know you guys talked about doing stand up in in Toronto. I know that you guys have what six albums. You guys have a special on Comedy Central. Um, you had one on Netflix, yeah. Showtime. Yeah. And I had the pleasure of being able to go and consume some of that content. And I just feel like you guys are so good at being able to write jokes and perform them. Yeah. And, I, and I feel like um, I had seen this quote on your site. Somebody had saying that you guys are able to capture the spirit of being twins without using it as a crutch. And I feel like that's such a perfect way to portray it because I um, just going back to um, America's Got Talent, one of the bits that you guys were talking about of this juxta juxtaposition of people that have pets and they say it's like having a kid and you yeah. guys just go in on, no, 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 it's not like having a kid and I don't, <laughs> don't want to ruin it. Yeah, no, but... don't give it away. Don't give it away. You got to yeah, yeah, yeah. see us at the I'm going to keep it on a leash. Yeah, I'm going to bring it back in. Unlike but... a kid, you can keep, keep it on, on a leash. <laughs> 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 but yes, no, no, no. It's it's funny because we made a choice very early in our career. We've been doing this for a while that we're not going to just solely focus on being twins on stage. We're not going to make that the mm -hmm. subject of all of our bits. We're not going to create some manufactured relationship. We were more interested in sort of 
showing the symbiosis of our relationship through our ability, through our style, through the way we tell stories and jokes and connect with each other on stage. And we felt like that was just a more interesting way to do it and more truthful way to do it. And I think mm -hmm. that's, it's it like- It allows us to talk about anything. Yes, and to be honest in ways that if we were manufacturing some like, he's the dumb one, I'm the smart one, and I gotta rein him in and all this crap, which yeah. is, you know, that was very successful for comedy teams. And who knows, maybe had we done that, we, we would be wildly successful. But, <laughs> but I do think we are very proud of what we're doing and we love the comedy that we're making. And, you know, we've been coming to Phoenix for a while to stand up mm -hmm. live to the Tempe Improv. We kind of bounce back and forth and we love the crowds in Phoenix. It's insane how great those rooms are and how many people come out to support comedy in Phoenix. It's a really good Comedy good town. comedy town. And so we always feel comfortable on stage. I feel like we always come out of those shows with like a new bit, which tells you if you're writing on stage. That tells that, you how good the rooms are. That's right. That's that's really cool. And I had listened to an interview, too, about how you guys had developed Finding the Funny, where you guys went to different towns and ended yeah. up coming up with material at each town and being able to compile that, which is Super yeah, that was, cool. that was a fun project we did on Audible and the album of material is available. You can get it wherever you get, you know, on Spotify yeah. or, or iTunes. And basically, you know, what we would do is you'd land in a town on third, like we're coming to Phoenix on Thursday yeah. night to be there so that we can do press on Friday morning, the 10th for our shows, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And we're like, we're landing now. What is going on in the town? What is the pulse of the town? What are they dealing with? Like, what's the current issue of the town? What's a sort of local landmark that everyone simultaneously loves and is embarrassed about? What's a local food thing? What's the personality of the population? And there are usually like five or six sort of comedy areas that you can start digging into in every city mm -hmm. and writing specific town specific material. And if you come out of the gates with like five to seven minutes even if you can go up to 10 that's amazing about material phoenix ab about phoenix <clears throat> about tempe, tempe about scottsdale like whatever um if you can develop that material then it starts off the show so beautifully and the crowd really like appreciates that you've taken the time to it's learn. It's kind of like, and in a way it allows you to sort of take off, like your, if your set is like a flight, you know, you start to like yeah. ramp up and then you take off and it gives you that sort of runway, runway to take off. We love it. And it's a super great challenge for us. And it also forces us not to just stick around in our hotel room and do nothing, but to go out and experience what's going on. So you really do see the city and you can only write specific jokes about places if you've been there. You know, right, you right. It. So, yeah, I remember we were in Buffalo and someone told us that Rick James was buried in Buffalo. We're like, what? Rick Wait, James is buried in Buffalo. That's that should be on the airport. Exactly. It should be like, welcome, <laughs> welcome to Buffalo. Rick James is buried here, here bitch. bitch. Or whatever. <laughs> like, you know? And like, how is that not there? And so that was our initial joke. And then we were like, let's go to, we got to go to his grave. So we go to his grave and there's just like a bunch of empty beer bottles and Mardi Gras beads because no one repped. And then like Hawaiian lays because no one repped Hawaii more than Rick James, I guess. I, mean, it, I don't know. But we're like, what was like artfully placed here versus what just blew in from the highway? And I guess right. that's the most fitting tribute to Rick James ever. Because he would probably have a lot of parties where you're like, who was invited? And, and who, who just, just blew in here? <laughs> blew in from the freeway. Uh, that is so fitting. That's so great. fitting. But like, again the desire to want to create material actually helped us engage with the city more. We did have a very quiet moment where we were standing by his grave and we just very silently said, she's a super freak, super freak. She's super freaky. Amen. 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 <laughs> very gracefully. Said, very amen. amen. And let us all say amen. amen. Uh, but and then yeah. you drop the Hawaiian lay on it. Yeah, you drop the Hawaiian lay, and then just got get the out hell of out of there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's beautiful. And and I just want to be able to stand over what you guys just said, like an Arizona sun, and just put some heat on it because I think I feel like it's 
It's difficult for some local comedians to come up with five minutes of material about the city. And I, the, I've i seen a lot of comedians, the Tempe Improv, Stand Up Live, all these different places in Phoenix. Yeah. And they usually, I think it's such a smart idea to be able to talk a little bit about some nuance or idiosyncrasy about Phoenicians. Right. And they do like one joke or maybe, maybe a minute tops. Mm -hmm. So to be able to do five minutes, I feel like that's... That's really cool. And I wanted to just skip off of, of that, too, like a kangaroo rat hopping through the Sonoran Desert. There you go. It's, Got it. Excellent. So, yes. And I, I feel like you guys challenge yourselves to be able to continue to write and write and write and write. And I feel like you guys have been able to set up these arenas or sandboxes for yourself, too, that are yeah. that allow you to be able to do that. And one of those gems is one of those oases in this desert of a metaphor is dumb people town Thank where you. i feel the the essence of it as you guys have said is just like a writer's room to kind of get warmed up you guys read these stories of very dumb people and they are i mean entertaining through and through and just in them, themselves i think the most recent episode there was the new zealanders that found a potato in their yes. yard that was yes. contested as one of the biggest potatoes there were south african a uh, south african gentleman that used his wedding ring as a pleasure device on yes. his on his genitals That's and right. had to his mom had to take him to the hospital. <laughs> and the guy who tried to build a weapon out of a of a leg of a table and he taped a saw to it. Yes. I mean, the, the things that people are doing, and I don't know if it's the pandemic and the fact that we're all going a little bit crazy because we've been at home too long, but like- And we all do dumb things. I mean, we've all done dumb things fair. in our lives, but it's really fun to know that there are people doing dumber, like a, to a level of dumb that you'll never approach. So you end up feeling better about yourself. Yeah, I always feel like people come away from the Dumb People Town podcast being like, oh my God, I've done some dumb things, but that I'm not. The thing I did the other day that I just could not get over why I did that, it was the dumbest thing ever. Like, I mean, I, my, I, we got a gift from my daughter that for, uh, you know, for the holidays and it yeah. came in the mail. And it looked like it was in an envelope, you know, Jay and I, because we're members of the Screen Actors Guild and the Writers Guild, you'll get screeners mm -hmm. of like, you know, movies that are coming out that you have to watch for the Screen Actors Guild Awards and stuff. And they're like movies yeah. that are out right now. You might get The Eternals. You might get the uh -huh. new Wes Anderson movie. It doesn't matter. It like comes on the, you know, in a little DVD. And so I saw this like yellow and manila style envelope and I'm like, okay, great. Get some screeners. And I just ripped through it like I'm literally a bear that's never opened a piece of mail ever. <laughs> and it was this gift that I got in our daughter and I completely ripped through the letter of authentication because I thought it was just a screen oh. and I ripped it. And I was like, this, I am such an idiot. Like all I had to do was flip it over and look at that it was this and not a screener. So he's dumb, but he's not as dumb as the woman at the country <laughs> music festival who, who got, got her, her head, head stuck in the tailpipe of a truck. Yeah. So I mean, oh, I can. I was feeling bad, and then I hear that story, and I'm like, yeah, not so bad. Yeah. This and and you know what? It's just the an ever flowing well of stupidity sure. as well. So it's it's every two times a week or every week. So we do it. so we do four big episodes a month, you know, every Tuesday. weekly weekly. We do every Tuesday. Yeah. And then we every have, second Friday we do a little shorter episode, a mini episode that's like only one story. The other ones are three stories. And we have huge guests and great guests and it's always someone fun and you know, it's fun to see people like John Hamm and people like Jack Black and people like, you know, Kathleen Madigan and people like, I mean, all kinds of comics. I'm trying to think. Anthony Atomenik, who was our last uh, yes. you know, phenomenal. Yeah. Such a great guest. To see those people, like, because, you know, interview podcasts are awesome because you go in depth and, and like what we're doing right, right. now, we love this because I love talking about comedy. At the right. same time, it's also cool to create comedy with somebody yeah it's like we're in a like you said it's a sandbox that we can play. now suddenly build the most amazing thing that we can come up with with some with a bobcat goldthwaite or you know someone like yeah that. yeah no it's it's wonderful and and i forgot to mention that too but the guests that you guys have had on the podcast have been absolutely incredible too Thanks, so man. it's fun so it's cool years people of being in this industry years of being in this business and then once people come once they're like oh, oh i want to come back and do it again really it's fun. Just so much fun yeah yeah people really have a good time 
Oh, well, that's awesome. That's really cool. So we're at, we're actually going to go into the advice portion of this podcast right. where we're going to give some advice. And I think we've got time for one question. But before that, I like to get us all centered and inspired with an inspirational right. quote. Great. So I've got one here. I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that they stick to when they're having down days. Um, Randy, Jason, do you guys have Can any you have that an inspirational quote? I mean, this is so one of our favorite quotes ever, ever, ever is attributed oh. to to Walter Payton, who was a running back for the Chicago Bears, and he said, "If you're good, you tell everybody. When you're great, they tell you." So that's just a nice little reminder to be humble and do what you do. And the world will let you know if you're doing great things. That's a good one. And then I, and then we have a quote that like, I hope this is not going to sound too bad that we have developed over time. That is inspirational to us. And we always go back to it. And maybe it'll be inspirational for other people because we're in a business where we're constantly sitting around waiting for people to say, give us the green light to do projects that we want to do. And Mm -hmm. that can be incredibly frustrating and difficult. This is more of a mantra than more of a mantra than a quote, but it's a simple phrase of uh, don't wait, create. Don't wait, create. Don't wait around for someone to say you can do something or not. Do your own thing. Create your own thing because or while you're waiting, create something else. That's right. While you wait, create. That's beautiful. That's like the creative version of Nike. I, yeah, yeah I just, just do it. Right. Yeah, that's right. That is just, actually just felt. Uh, yeah, you guys need a an iconic instead of a swoosh. swoosh. I'm not sure. We'll Maybe a, a paintbrush. Yeah, swish. So, mm. swish. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> love it. Awesome. All right. So the inspirational quote that I actually have it's not by any person whatsoever. It's by a robot, and mm-hmm. its name is Inspirobot. Right. And it's program. It's if you go to inspirobot.io, you can just click on a button, and through the magic of AI, it searches through all of the sacred texts and perhaps comic books nice. and um, advertorials, and it takes wow. some of the wisest words and pulls them together for an inspirational quote. Well, let's hear it. Let's do it. So I'll, I'll say it, and then we can interpret. We can squeeze the juice out of it. Let's see. Okay. So this week, Inspirobot says between a heart. And a masterpiece comes a dog. Mm. 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 Well, between a heart and a masterpiece comes a dog that maybe between, you know, a masterpiece is something you labor at for, you know, ostensibly either it's been inside of you all along and then it just comes out like there. Are I think a masterpiece requires luck. I think a masterpiece requires, mm. I think your heart tells you what you want to do and i think a masterpiece just requires some luck you 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 we're constantly digging down deep 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 when we're creating things and sometimes you hit oil and it right. flies up and you hit a man and you, you you hit upon a masterpiece and sometimes you just just digging deep down into the ground and you don't have anything and in between right. that oftentimes there is a dog wandering nearby <laughs> <laughs> Oftentimes, the, the but the dog can be like your, that's that's like in. either your can it can be seen as a positive thing or it can be seen as a negative thing. You sometimes have to get it's a you know this is See, a dog. It's that's what good. I was thinking too. I was thinking the dog might be the barrier where you your heart is trying to find that masterpiece, but then you have to go back home because you gotta bring your dog in. Oh, no. You gotta that's let him right. out. I gotta go home and let the dog out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it oh, made man. me think of that Our bit. Man, yes. <laughs> <laughs> love it very inspiring that's that's so great okay well now that we're inspired we were throwing that bone and uh already <laughs> i'll we'll go into this last first and last question this question great. says my neighbor's cats haunt my dreams my neighbor is the sweet older grandma who only speaks spanish and feeds the stray cats of the neighborhood she mm-hmm. leaves out food for them and raises the new batch of kittens every six months or so. There are around eight cats that frequent her backyard. A line of kittens follows her while she hangs up her laundry every morning. Sounds cute, right? Yeah. Wrong. No. These cats feed a fury in me like nothing else. They mm-hmm. poop everywhere. I wake up to freshly buried piles of poop in my yard every day. They pee mm-hmm. in my car, making pay. They pee on my car, making the whole thing smell like cat pee no matter what I do. Every time I plant something new, a pile of poo shows up 
in the fresh dirt within a day. Yep. My dog eats the cat poop whenever she can find it and gets sick often. I can only imagine this will significantly hurt my selling price when I eventually sell the house. Am I the a-hole for hating them and wanting to call animal control? How do I do that without ruining my relationship with my neighbor? Well, I was saying you could call animal control on your neighbor and then just release her into the wild. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, because on some level, this is a conundrum. This is a difficult thing because here's a woman being nice to animals. However, I see right. someone with a loaf of bread feeding a bunch of pigeons. I'm like, these are rats with wings. Do not do it. Why are you throwing... You're... How, how little love do you have? How How... I, what's the word I'm like, how, what a, how much of a lack of love do you have in your life that you need to buy your love from these animals by giving them food? Because literally they don't care about you. Like pigeons don't, they just want the food. And so like when Same you see- Same with these cats. These cats know where to go to get fed because these cats are surviving. They're not living in her house. They're just like outdoor cats that know where to go to get their food. So this woman invited right. a problem into the neighborhood without thinking of the repercussions. And it's, I mean, like the flip side of this is I have a very nice neighbor who, uh, who is, I think, obsessive compulsive as far as cleaning is concerned. And she will uh -huh. go around in people's like in front of their houses, like where on the street and like sweep up around their house and clean up, which when I first came oh. to the neighborhood, I was like, that's super nice that she's doing it. She cares about the neighborhood. But then yeah. I'm like, maybe she's judging everyone as she's doing it. And like, How, do you, I can't live with your mess. Now I got to clean up your garbage. So it's like, <laughs> there's a flip side to every single thing. So yes, this woman is being really nice to the cats and she's being really kind and sweet and helping these cats out. But the other problems that it invites in the neighborhood is too much. So, like, so I would say, I would, this is what I would say. I would say yeah. you have to talk to this woman and you have to, if this is someone you do have a relationship with, if it's someone you don't know, then call animal control anonymously and be like, hey, this is a real problem. We have tons of cats. This woman's feeding them. Fair. You need to, you need to come and get rid of these cats. So yeah. but if you have a relationship with this person, you have to go to her and say, hey, here's the deal. You're feeding all these cats, which is, I understand that you're doing something great, but it's causing a lot of problems in for me and for us. So I'm asking you to stop doing it. We're going to clean up these cats, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go get you a cat that you can take care of that's an indoor cat for you that you can have in your house. And then it's it lives be in your house. Gift to my you. gift to you in exchange. Because if your desire is to connect with a pet, then I'm going to give you this indoor cat that will be yours that will poop inside of the litter box in your house and not in my and not pee on my car and not get my dog sick and not do all these things like all these other cats are. And if that's what you want. And now if that woman, now the ball's in her court. If that woman then comes back to you and says, F you, in whatever way she wants to say it, I'm still gonna do this and you can't stop me. Then you call her. Then you go, control. bro, and you call her bro. You go, bro, <laughs> bro, I'm gonna <laughs> stop you. I'm going to stop you. Yes, I can. And that's it. But you do offer something. I think honesty is important. I think offering, offering a something, gift of a cat is really important. Really important. And then say, you know, let's do this the right way. Let's do this a way where you can have the companionship that you're seeking and then also not screw up everyone else's life around you. Because that's a problem. I, man, I love that. I know we've probably just only scratched the surface. Ah! Of this, but I feel like... I feel like you guys have offered some fine solutions, and you I mean, know, she's up the, a tree. She's up a tree with this one. <laughs> she's up. A tree. <laughs> Beautiful. You gotta well, nip. You gotta nip this one in the bud. That's you gotta right. catnip it, cat it in the bud. Beautiful. All right. Well, we're gonna press pause and uh, say just what. First off, thank you both for joining, and it was such a wonderful time. Thank you. And. I um I can't wait to see you guys in Phoenix, Tempe at the Tempe yep. Improv, the 10th through the 12th. What else have you guys got going on? Where can people follow you? What would you like to plug? Sure. So uh, you mentioned our podcast, Dumb People Town. If your fans are sports fans, we do a sports podcast every week called View from the Cheap Seats. And we just started a Patreon that is so much fun. If you look up patreon.com slash Sklar Brothers, our old show, Cheap Seats, which was us making fun of old weird sporting events, we're doing yeah. a new version of it. So uh, it's called Cheaper Seats. 
streets and we're finding the stuff online and basically it's that it's the show but done even in a more low rent way and you get nice. a new episode every month so still funny still, still as really funny. really funny it's and really the events fun. are crazy and it's events that we that came along after the show was done so trying to do things that you've never seen cornhole before. high diving battle of the network stars balloon world cup it's oh really man crazy. We might get into some combat juggling. It's all good. Professional and, tag. Yeah. There's professional pillow fighting. That's yeah, coming down the line. Combat pillow. We did a slap fight. It's so much fun. So again, five bucks a month, you get extra interviews from our podcast, like, and you get uh, a new podcast, the video podcast that's just for you every Wednesday, and then a uh, new episode, new episode of Cheaper Seats every month. Super fun. So if you look that up on Patreon, that's a great way. And then we have, we've got, we'll, we'll be announcing something probably in the early new year, a new project that we're doing, and we'll oh. talk about that. So just follow us at Sklar Brothers on every platform, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, just be on the lookout for a cool announcement of a new project that we're doing probably in the new year and other than that come see us do stand up wherever you are i mean hopefully we'll we can sell these shows out at the tempe improv it's one of our favorite rooms sounds nice. like you probably have great listeners who enjoy good comedy and so the best we would be yeah. very well, very we would lucky. Be grateful and psyched if they came out to our shows we have a great feature act from denver one of our favorite comedians in the world and uh and good good friends jeff tice he's a great comedian is, you guys is, will love him. he's featuring for us and he's gonna nice. do like 25, 30 minutes right before us, and he's worth the price of admission, and then we come up afterwards. So it should be really fun. And tell us if you uh, heard us on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, if you come to the show and you heard us on this podcast, we're out you know, in the, in the lobby afterwards, like selling some merch, come up to us and please tell us you if you heard us on this podcast. We'll, we'll give you a big hug. They'll sign your cat too, if you- We'll sign, sign your, your cat. cat, yes. <laughs> and send it away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that's the episode. Thank you so much, my jolly good friends. Really appreciate you guys hopping on the pod, listening, going for that wonderful ride with me. Thank you for riding me. And if you guys want to keep riding, write a review on Apple Podcasts or YouTube, you can comment there, subscribe if you haven't. Tell a friend, tell one friend about this podcast and it will continue to grow. It's like those email chains where it's like forwarded on to 10 friends. I don't know why I became surfer staff. Forwarded on to 10 friends and then you can a gnarly curl. And yeah, surf's up, bro. So if you guys do that, then my gnarly curl of a wave of a podcast will continue to swell and destroy surfers. And that's what my ultimate goal in life is to destroy the surfing race. So yeah, that could really help. And follow me on TikTok, Instagram at Stefan Satani, Seth Satani and a comedy advice podcast and be kind to one another. Unless their name is Larry, then just f him. No, I'm kidding. Even Larry, be nice to Larry. Love you guys. Merry holidays, Mwah. big old holiday smooch on the gooch. Love y'all.